Hey you guys and welcome. My name is Jordan Giorgio alongside Tom Downey. We are here to bring you some breaking news on a developing story. Florida Gators head coach Jim McElwain. It is confirmed that he has been fired and I have Tom here our college football analyst to give us some details and James Yoder our other college football analyst will be here shortly to join us. Tom any well, updates? Well, they're calling it mutually agreed to part ways. Let's not kid ourselves yeah. here, folks. Jim McElwain done got fired. This <laughs> is really, this is really, if McElwain wanted to, if, 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 if Florida wanted McElwain there, they he'd would still be, be there. there. Yes. So let's not say, oh, they agreed to mutually part ways. No, come on here, folks. He got fired. He got fired. The struggling Florida um, team is three and four right now. And it's not lucky looking pretty. We, lucky, exactly. And we never know what Florida team is going to show up on true. game day. So now, Tom, give us a little backstory about the buyout and how that would well, work. Well, I, I know that there's a difference between being fired and mutually agreeing to part ways. But in terms of the buyout, mm -hmm. that's where it actually does come into play. Because mutually agreeing to part ways makes it seem to me like that Florida is getting out at least partially of this buyout. Now, we don't have all the details yet. We'll wait and see when that comes out. Might be a little bit. I think we'll get a lot more details on the backstory behind Jim McElwain and how he got along with the Florida Athletic Department. I think there's going to be some good stuff coming out. Right. The main thing I'm really excited to see was did Jim McElwain make up those death threats? Exactly. Because I kind of think that he did. You really want to just wonder why. I need to know the why. I wish I could oh, I call him up right now yeah. and figure He's it out. And anything. that'll be interesting to see because in order to buy out, you need a probable cause and a reason. So it'll be interesting to see if that's going to be the reason that the university uses. Yeah, so... Because they're already uh, still paying um, must the champ. They, if, if they don't get the buyout reduction is mm -hmm. what I'll call it. They owed, they owed McElwain from start to finish, we'll call it $40 million, right. which is a lot of money. One other note that I want to add here, Matt Hayes, uh, the college football beat reporter, uh, was told that on two different occasions, Steve Spurrier reached out to Jim McElwain to offer some help on the offensive side of the ball. I get why McElwain said no, because he wants to be the coach, not Spurrier, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look good if you're a Florida fan. Right, and now what would you say would be the icing on the cake. The the moment that this university decided they were done, was it this blowout it's loss to question. Georgia? Was um, it the death threats? Was it he can't he can't provide the information on the death threats? Where would you say I, I kinda get the vibe with how quickly this thing kind of happened mm -hmm. that this was less of a uh, of a one major incident, mm -hmm. but a straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the the death threats. And I think Florida, I'd heard a little bit of buzz that they were kind of frustrated with McElwain overall. Yeah, they won two straight SEC East titles. Mm -hmm. They were generous SEC East titles because the rest of the conference was just brutal. All right. So that's going to bring me to my next question, Tom. So only two years he's been head coach at Florida mm -hmm. at this two and a half. Cool call. Now, what would you say to those who think this is way too soon I think that to an extent it is too soon mm -hmm. but it's also I think there's a lot more going on than just the on the field stuff I think that the death threats I think there was some conflict within the athletic department McElwain after getting a couple bad losses early in his career it, it always seemed like he didn't quite feel confident mm -hmm. at being at Florida and I think Butch Jones is something with something similar right now now Florida's officially announced the hire Randy Shannon is going to be the interim head coach I don't believe he is an actual candidate, though, for the main job. So, no, another thing that you just mentioned about um, Butch Jones, I, I think we could all say that we're a little surprised that he hasn't been fired yet, and this came a little bit, like, came first. So, but does this send a message to other universities that are struggling, their head coach is struggling, that it's time? It does a little bit, only because any good athletic department knows that a, you have a list of coaches that you got to get to as things go along. Like, if you if you got to fire a coach, here's the list of coaches you kind of have together that you're going to do more research on. Okay. Now, Florida has their list, and we're going to get into that list in a little bit here. What it means for the other programs is, let's say you're in Nebraska in particular, mm -hmm. Scott Frost. And an Nebraska option. alumnus, a mm -hmm. dude that you should probably hire right now. Yeah. Like, he's better than Mike Riley right now. He's going to be coveted, and that's the issue. Florida could say, hey, we want Scott Frost. Let's get going now. Mm -hmm. Let's start working the back channels. Let's start indicating that we, we have some interest there, doing your research. Let him know that you're the first team mm -hmm. interested. 
And that puts them in an advantage compared to Nebraska. As long as they have Mike Riley, it's tough to actually go behind the scenes and make stuff happen. Okay, and so from your personal opinion, who would be the best fit for this Florida football team? I actually do think it might end up being a guy like Dan Mullen. I, okay. I know with, with the ties to Florida, with the ties to the current athletic department, he'd be a great fit. I think the best ideal option would be somebody like a uh, – you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw out Bob Soup. I don't think I don't think he's a realistic option. I think someone like like Chip Kelly would be great, right. but I don't know how realistic Chip Kelly actually is. Okay, and he also he's a he is better on a college team, but we can kind of tell that he wants to be in the I, NFL. I do think he wants to be back in the NFL. Mm -hmm. I I really do believe that. I don't know if he's gonna end up doing that, but I think deep down. He wants to have success in the NFL. That's what he wants at, at the core. All right, and we want to know, you guys, who you think will be the Florida's next head football coach. So get, throw in those comments below. And, Tom, i got to agree with you. I feel like the relationship with Dan Mullen, I think that's going to be if they get a way. Yeah. And they, you know, they, maybe they don't, maybe they do. I, my guess is that they do. I think there's some interest there. I'm curious to see what happens. We do have 10 different coaches we can look at. I think there's more than just 10 on Scott Strickland's initial list, but I'm curious to see how, how things end up happening. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll start here with number 10 here. We'll go into Bob Stoops. This is a name, and James here, when he comes on here in a little bit, is going to have some more information here on, on, on this for us. With Bob Stoops, I do not believe this is a, this is a, a legitimate candidate option. Okay. I don't think he's realistic. And why would you say that? I don't think Bob Stoops wants to be a coach right now. Like, I, I know he might that, be enjoying I'm that retirement. Sure Florida wants him. Look, the reason Bob Stoops retired at 57 years old, only 56 because he retired uh, before September, around this age, tragically, his father passed away mm -hmm. in a, of a heart attack while he was coaching. He was a high school coach up in Youngstown. So when Bob Stoops' father passed away, that was that was what was in the back of Stoops' head, like, hey, you know, I need I need to leave around this time. It's not a coincidence that Stoops chose to leave here, not because of a potential job that could come up with me at Notre Dame, Chicago, or Florida. It was because of the age he was. You don't leave Oklahoma when they might win a college football playoff championship mm -hmm. because you want a different job in, in the preseason. You do it because it's time for you to stop coaching. Yeah. So I don't really believe that deep down Bob Stoops oh. wants to be a coach right now. He might be itching from the 90s when he was a defensive coordinator I know at there's, Florida. No, there, there's the ties there, and I he get might it. might be wanting to bring I, it back. I just I don't think deep down that Stoops wants to be a coach right now. I think he wants to remain a retired coach, and he wants to spend time with his family. I know that for a lot of people, it's, oh, coaching is everything that they do, and that's why you see some coaches coach they literally can't anymore, and then six months later, they – they passed away. So you're not necessarily saying that he's not going to come to Florida. He's not even going to coach in general. I don't think he's going to coach, no. And I know that there's been a lot of buzz. I know Florida likes him, and we'll get to that once James Yoder here comes on in just a little bit. But I do not believe that Bob Stoops wants to coach right now. And I'm sure Florida will try and court him, and they'll throw a bunch of money at him. I just don't think it's going to work. I don't think he wants to be a coach right now. All right. And next up on our list of replacements to watch is at number nine we have Mike Gundy from Oklahoma State. I think there's What's a the I think there's a clear cutoff once we get to the top five here with Mike Gundy. Remember the last time the Florida job came over when they hired Jim McElwain? Mike Gundy. The report was he had expressed some interest in becoming the Florida Gators head coach. Oh, okay. Which is weird. So he verbally said it. And he oh. didn't, well, behind the scenes oh, back channels. Okay, okay. He, didn't, he didn't come out and say, no, and the, the joke is, Jordan, that no one takes, <laughs> no one accepts a job until they've been offered. Right. The joke is that, like, everyone says, oh, no, we never, we only offered it to one guy. It's kind of like the, hey, I'll go if you go. You know, if you say yes, we'll offer it to you. If, if you're going to say no, then we won't offer it to you. So right. it's, it's that type of thing. So with Mike Gundy, it was, it was weird to me because he, he is an Oklahoma State alumnus. What I think has happened, and this has kind of been very much hinted at in, in, various, in, uh, in various conversations that, that we've seen, Mike Gundy and the Oklahoma State big booster, a guy named T. Boone Pickens, they do not get along. And I think that T. Boone Pickens wants everything for Oklahoma State. Frankly, Mike Gundy has made this team into a perennial candidate to win big, and that is not something that Mike Gundy and Oklahoma State have done before. So 
We'll see what ends up happening. My belief is that Gundy might express a little bit of interest. It's a name I wanted to mention, but I don't think it's going to be a super probable one. Okay. So. All right. And we want to go ahead and move on to number eight, a replacement also. Yeah. Mike McIntyre, the yep. Colorado head coach. Now, McIntyre's kind of had a bit of an up-and-down coaching stock mm -hmm. the past year. So he turned Colorado in from a perennial bottom feeder. Maybe not perennial because they only just moved to the back 12 But they were not good before he arrived there. All right. So what I think we'll see happen is that McIntyre has drawn interest in the past from various teams, including some SEC schools. But he likes being at Colorado right now. I think he'll try to remain at Colorado to an extent. The other thing that has brought down his stock significantly, he had a very poor handling of a domestic assault accusation against one of his assistant coaches. Interesting. That was more or less like ignored, and that's something you can't do today at all, frankly. So with Mike McIntyre, I think that that's the, that's the significant thing there is I think his stock has kind of dropped because of that. I think he's going to remain at Colorado for the time being. But it is an name I wanted to mention because I know there's been some general – SEC interest in McIntyre. He does have some SEC ties. So not the best option, but at least we have some. Mentioning. A name worth mentioning. And at number seven, we have Neil Brown from Troy. I remember Troy went and beat LSU as Neil Brown called it big boy football. Oh, yeah. They weren't and how much they did they pay LSU? Oh, it was almost a million, I think, yeah. it was somewhere around, around that range. Neil Brutal. Brown <laughs> has done a very good job at Troy. Now, Troy is actually a surprisingly decent program in terms of the, the Power Five schools. Uh, or some group of five schools. Troy's been one of the more consistent ones. He's only 37. He's very young with some SEC ties. He's a Kentucky alumnus. He coached there as well. It might be a bit of a step up for right. Neil Brown. Those are some big shoes to I fill. I think he's a pretty darn good coach, Jonah. Maybe okay. what he ends up doing is he kind of follows, maybe he tries to be the next Tom Herman and tries to win big mm -hmm. at Troy okay. and then takes a big jump forward. But he's only 37 years old. I'm very impressed by what he's done at Troy. I think he's going to remain a legitimate one. All right. And at number six, we have dress Jeff Barom. Hey, before Purdue. Had a, Purdue. Well, Purdue had a couple of rough mm -hmm. games here in back-to-back -back cases. What I've, I've liked a lot of what I've seen out of Jeff Brom from originally at Western Kentucky. He's done very well with Purdue. A little bit here that he was very much the, the, hot, the hot coach in terms of not just Big Ten Coach of the Year, but National Coach of the Year. I think that with Jeff Brom, it's a question of whether or not he wants to leave he wants to, to leave uh, Purdue. And I don't know if he wants to do that quite yet. That's, that's the area that I'm concerned about with Jeff Brom. I think if Florida came calling, he'd have interest, but I think he's just outside the top five. All right. And as we are moving into our, our top five coaches, that could possibly replace the now fired Jim McElwain. Mm -hmm. At Florida, we have Scott Frost from UCF. But before we get into that, we have our other college football analyst, James Yoder, joining us now. James, before we get into that, I kind of want to get your take on this whole situation playing out. Well, Jordan, Tom, thanks for having me. I ran literally from a physical therapy session to get here to talk about this with you because I have been burning up the phone lines with a few people very influential in the sports world who have strong ties to Florida. And let me kind of tell you what I'm hearing and then I'll give you my take on it. So there is a lot going on and this just didn't happen in the last few hours. It's been going on for at least a couple of weeks. I think to a little bit of an extent, it's been going on since this past off season. I think there's people who just, after a couple of years, we're never going to get to the level we were under Spurrier, under Urban Meyer, and there was already some looking around. So uh, we can talk about a little bit of that just in a few moments. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think it reminds me of Texas last year, which you literally have, uh, an, I guess, a, a kind of a brand new athletic director, and you've got factions. You've got the old school guys, you got the new school, you got people with no, uh, you know, dog in the. Uh, is my mic on? Yeah, sorry. Uh, you got people with no uh, mic, no dog in the fight, and uh, and in general. Uh, I don't think we're going to have a quick solution unless somebody comes in with this, like a truck full of money. So uh, I got a lot to talk about on there. But, uh, but what I really want to talk about first is the faction. So mm -hmm. if we've got that graphic here in a minute, I'll kind of talk about it. So what's developing right now is faction one, faction two, faction three. And so this was told me by people who have been on the phones all weekend mm -hmm. with people at Florida. So there's mutiny in Florida, Tom mm -hmm. and Jordan. Mutiny, okay? And so mm -hmm. what does that mean by that? Is like when you know other schools like Michigan and, and, and some others have uh, have had coaching searches, you've got people from the way old school, the new school, and then just people who want to see a different direction in the program. So want to kind of talk about faction number one, and that is the Bob Stoops faction. And so uh, the Bob Stoops faction is 
uh, is the, I'm sorry, the, the Spurrier faction is the group of people who want Bob Stoops to be the head coach. And I apologize for the audience. Uh, microphone was out there for just a second. I was running over here from a uh, physical therapy session on my back. Cam Rogers, you know what I'm talking about there. So Spurrier faction, this is old school guys, Tom. This is guys in the 60s and 70s, sometimes as old as 80 years old. These are guys who played at Florida or, uh, or were at school at Florida back in the 60s and early 70s, and they want Bob Stoops. They want to bring it back to the fun and gun days like they used to see in the 90s and to the you know, 2000 time frame under Steve Spurrier. Bob Stoops was there up until 1998 as, uh, as their defensive coordinator, and we saw the kind of offenses he could put together at Florida. Go ahead, Tom. James, I I would like to double my salary right now. Okay. Can you do that? Uh, yes it depends. No? Um, it depends on what the bet is, Tom. All right. I said you're you can, but you can. That's you, about as likely as Bob Stoops <coughs> going to Florida right now. Okay. I know that the the older faction would love to get Bob Stoops. I truly don't believe he wants to be a coach right now. Now maybe you can throw a gazillion dollars at him and he'll suddenly have some interest there. And I understand why the Spurrier faction wants to return to the old days, but at a certain point, I just don't think it's realistic anymore, and you got to move on. Find a coach who wants to be a coach right now. Yeah, I guess you could say that's uh, that's probable if you believe Bob Stoops and take him at his word. But I do. you would have to believe Urban Meyer at his word five, six years ago at the same University of Florida. He stepped away to be with his family. He had health issues. Huh, sound familiar? Oh, Bob Stoops to step away because his dad died around the same age, Tom. I'm not so sure that he wouldn't come back. If only, I'll go back if the Florida job, but it's not going to come available. Jim Trestle's crushing it. Jim McElwain, back-to-back -back SEC titles. There's no way this Look. job will come free. Look, if, if, the, if the Gators get Bob Stoops as their head coach at that point, go all in. Get Steve Spurt help out as your OC or quarterbacks coach. After all, uh, when this came out a, 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 just a little bit earlier ago here, what happened was that uh, Steve Spurrier offered Jim McElwain uh, to help him out on offense, and McElwain said no, which did not go over well, I think, with this Spurrier faction. Well, the Spurrier faction, I think, is probably the strongest one, and it is the one that has the most m money in, uh, in the University of uh, Florida's alumni and, and their booster. So I like the Spurrier faction. I think they're going to go big after Bob Stoops. So let's take a look, if we can, at the second faction, Tom. This is the Urban faction. This is the Urban Meyer faction. This is kind of the new money. Guys in their mid-40s, early 50s, they, were, they, they kind of went to school when Steve Spurrier uh, – they were, they were in school when Steve Spurrier was the uh, – uh, the head football coach there. And now, Tom, now they saw all the success they had under Urban Meyer, an offensive-minded coach who just runs up the score, does everything, has a little West Coast flavor like Urban did at Utah. They see that with Chip Kelly. This is the group that wants to offer Chip Kelly five years, $60 million, okay? Big money, instant solution. And I don't, you know, if you can't go wrong with either one of those, but you know every time there's a coaching search, these Chip are the Kelly. kind of names that get thrown out. <laughs> yeah. It's the spot pie in the sky, you know, it's the Grudens, and sometimes, oh, Bill Cowher, Bill Parcells would go back to college and coach uh, Texas probably, right? And so you're going to hear the same thing in Florida. I think, Tom, if I had to put my – uh, reputation on wh which faction kind of wins out just because of they're going to, you know, it's almost like a uh, you've got the Democrats, the Republicans, and you've got the Independents. I think the Independents are going to get, are going to go with the urban faction here. So let's go to that next faction, the Independents. These are kind of uh, the, the, the boosters. It doesn't matter the age. They just don't have an alliance to either one of the coaches. They're just Florida guys, all right? They're Florida guys. I've been told these are the guys that they want to start fresh from scratch. They want to go wide, sketch cast a wide net, talk to everybody, and if they do that, then they might end up with Chip Kelly or Bob Stoops, but they don't want to just settle on those guys. If you look at Florida's most successful coaching hires, they were not big names already like Stoops and Kelly. Now, Urban Meyer was becoming a big name. He had two big seasons at Utah and a prior season at Bowling Green where he had some success, but he wasn't the Urban Meyer we know today. He certainly wasn't anywhere near Chip yeah. Kelly or Bob Stoops. Is. So could you get uh, or Nor uh, Norvell at uh, or Memphis? Is he the next Urban Meyer? Could you get a guy uh, like Campbell. our boy Matt Campbell mm -hmm. at Iowa State? Is he the next Urban Meyer? Is he the next Steve Spurrier? who prior to uh, prior to being at Florida was the Duke head coach, okay? So there is no Are you real... Are the Duke's not an elite college football powerhouse? <laughs> All I know, Tom, is this. They're not, by the way. Um, <laughs> there was a really funny thing, just as an aside. Uh, there was a... 
guy in his 40s, 50 years old, he was a student at the time when, when Spurrier was the head coach at Duke, said he was 19 years old, he was a sports writer for the Duke newspaper, Spurrier offered him a beer at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. Told him he was underage, Spurrier said, who cares? Told him it's 10 o'clock, who cares? Funny story. But, I love the old ball coach. Okay, uh, so, so this new school, I think, wants to cast a wide net, and they just can't get this hire wrong, Tom. This is going to be the get, sixth totally head coaching job since you know Spurrier and beyond, you know, fifth since Steve Spurrier was the coach, and they've got two, like I said, they've got one right in Urban Meyer. They've got three dead wrong, Tom. So they got to nail this one. So let's go ahead and look at the former Florida coaches, kind of talk about uh, the post-Steve Spurrier era, if we can, and uh, and we'll kind of get into what uh, this, this coaching search might look like. All right, so we'll start here with, with Ron Zook, the first one up. Everyone knows Zookie, right? Yeah, he was he was brutal, Tom, right, and he, uh, he 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 had more success oh, wow. at Illinois than he did at Florida, I think. But because he had Rashad Bennett off for one year, you know, set the tone. He was there for three seasons. Uh, got fired after the 2004 season, Tom. But he set the tone with a, guy, a lot of guys like Chris Leak and some others mm -hmm. that were the catalyst for that yeah. Urban Meyer recruit or national title in his second year in 2006. Mm -hmm. So coordinator, coordinator didn't go very well. Defensive guy didn't go very well. I think that can speak to what we're going to see in this coaching search. Mm -hmm. Second one up is a name all Florida fans know, Urban Meyer. Yeah, so he was coming off an undefeated season, Tom, at Utah. Uh, coming off undefeated season the prior year at Utah, left before the bowl game, and we know how deep my ties at Notre Dame are. They thought they had him in 2005, they Tom. They lowballed him on a couple things. One, money. They thought we're Notre Dame. We can get this guy four years ago. He was our wide receiver coach. He's our guy. But uh, Florida came in with big money, and Florida was willing to lower their academic restrictions, take some uh, you know, questionable grades, even take some JUCO guys. Notre Dame wouldn't even budge like they did for Brian Kelly. Mm -hmm. All right, next up we have Will Muschamp. You guys kind of mentioned him earlier. He did not go well. Yeah. <laughs> did not go. Having more success. Well, I mean, he had that second year, was it, where they had one loss, Tom. They were a couple of plays of maybe going to the national title game. Uh, 2013, I'm just getting my years wrong a little bit, maybe 2012. But he was the guy before he became Florida's head coach. He was the head coach in waiting at Texas, yeah. Tom. And people just thought he had an absurd amount of potential success at, uh, at Florida. He was a young guy. 2011, he came in as their coach, right after Urban Meyer. And I'll tell you what, it just didn't work out too well for Will Muschamp. But he's having some good success now at South Carolina. And I think I think you know he would have done better in his Florida coaching job had he come later in his career with a little more experience. Well, we'll get to the, the current coach here in just a second. With Will Muschamp, the thing that always struck me interesting was the last year he made a change at coordinator, almost made a big difference for him, and that's had a little bit more success now at South Carolina, where he's found a quarterback, a common theme of problems, under their newest head coach, Jim McElwain. Yeah, absolutely. I newest mean, fired head coach. I mean, just look at West Virginia, Tom. Who's the quarterback right now? Will Greer. Yeah, where, where, where did he play a couple years oh, ago? Florida. Florida. Ah, Florida. Yeah, he did play at Florida. And, uh, you know, they're just – I just can't believe – Time you for can't, a fresh start. You, I think that was the beginning of the end for Jim McElwain. You can't – I mean, it kind of reminds me I'm – I'm a Harbaugh guy, but you, Michigan and Florida, you can't name me five schools that have better quarterback traditions in the last 25 years than those two schools, and neither one of them can find a coach. It's third year under – under uh, it's third year under uh, McElwain, and he's fired. It's third year under Harbaugh. Maybe he's finally found a guy with three quarters of Brandon Peters. But nevertheless, uh, go to our next one. All right, we have a Jim McElwain, obviously, a little bit about him right there in his recap of two seasons. I find it very interesting, the, uh, the records with Muschamp and McElwain. Yeah. McElwain might have finished with the same mark as Muschamp. Yeah, so yeah. It's very similar. Well, very similar. So, uh, I mean... I think his is more of a uh, more of a circumstance of it just went all wrong at the same time. You, you lose 42 to seven. You've got these allegations of lying uh, in a press conference, which, by the way, every single coach in the world does. They just lie about football and not death threats. So, yeah, that uh, was a little um, <laughs> no aggressive. I yeah, would have to say. exactly. So that all just kind of uh, you know cascaded at one time. So McElwain's out. Florida's looking for a fresh start, and we've got I think Tom five candidates coming up here that are. Very quality, you know, candidates for head coach. Each one of them individually fits different uh, different criteria here, but all can potentially win the, you know, can, can win at Florida. Yeah. So guys, I want to move on into our top five replacements. At number five, we have Scott Frost, a guy who's turning heads, completely turned this UCF program around at as they were 0 and 12, mm -hmm. 6 and 7 last year, and now an undefeated 
UCF night football team. That's a very significant turnaround, and it's an impressive one, and I think it would appeal to a program like Florida, who needs some fixing right now in the program overall. But also, Nebraska, and as a former quarterback at Nebraska, I feel like you know, they need to make make plays now. Here's what I think is going to end up happening is that Florida will have interest in Scott Frost, mm -hmm. but it'll kind of be as a, a backup candidate as opposed to a bigger name like a Chip Kelly, a Bob Stoops, or someone else in mind. Nebraska, though, will make Scott Frost their top target. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, it makes so much interest when you go back to Nebraska. Nebraska loves to live in the past to an extent. Who better than a former quarterback who's had great success at Central Florida? So I think Frost ends up at Nebraska, but there is some interest on both sides. You know, Scott Frost reminds me a lot of P.J. Fleck, right? Uh, both offensive guys from, from uh, they're kind of around the same era, around the same age. P.J. Fleck went to uh, Western Michigan. They had an 0-12 year. I actually think it was when he was coach, but two seasons later. First year was awful. Awful. Then they go to like 7-5, seven 7-6. and, five, seven and six. Then they go to 12-0, 12-1 that final year. He gets a job. By the way, he took a job that was beneath him in my opinion. He should not have taken that Minnesota job. I'm not sure why he did. But Scott Frost, Tom, I saw US, UCF play Michigan, and I think it was Scott Frost's first game, maybe second game as head coach. They look like a clown show as a program. Just a year and a month later, they look like a potential powerhouse. Totally. All right. And we're going to move on. Um, another guy who's turning heads after some big wins this season, Matt Campbell from Iowa State. The two wins undefeated against undefeated at TCU in and Oklahoma. I know Toledo guy there, so I know that that's a big deal for you, James. <laughs> Matt Campbell, for anything, is one of the hottest coaches in all of college right now, for those looking for a next a step up, so to speak, in terms of their next job. I think I've been very impressed by, by what Campbell has done in terms of his on-the-field play. He turned around Iowa State, a program that, frankly, just was bad overall. Mm -hmm. To beat Oklahoma in Norman, to upset TCU in Ames, top five programs at the time, and still top ten teams, that's damn impressive, James. And the school he went to, Tom, is just a, a perennial bottom feeder. I mean, nothing good ever comes out of Iowa State's football program, except for Tom Herman in those few years he was their offensive coordinator before Ohio <laughs> State. And I just give Matt Campbell props. People in Ohio, and specifically Toledo, and some of the Ohio State people, uh, really question, why do you take that job? Why not stick at Toledo, a place you can prove? Toledo's been a consistent winner for yeah. 30 years. Why not get to P.J. Flex level and jump from Toledo to maybe Nebraska, or a Michigan, or Notre Dame, or an Ohio a, State? A better lower potter. Uh, yeah, five. Why, why go to Iowa State, the bottom feeder of the Big 12? But Campbell's going to big things, Tom. The rumors I've heard, even recently as today, is that he is dead set in the Ohio State job one day. So if Florida takes the wouldn't, job, wouldn't surprise me at all. Do they risk losing another coach to Ohio State like they did Urban Meyer a year surprise surprise. me at all. He's he's an Ohio boy through and through. Makes perfect sense he'd want to get the Ohio State. And who knows how long Urban Meyer is going to be the head coach there? Yeah. Okay. And at number three, we have Mike Norvell, a very young guy from Memphis. Yeah, he was the youngest coach in college football before a dude named Lincoln Riley got promoted <laughs> as head coach at Oklahoma. A fantastic offensive coach. That's that's his trademark. He is winning with Justin Fuentes' players. But Mike Norvell has made this Memphis offense into one of the more dynamic offenses in all of college football. They are awesome to watch, often playing on Thursday or Friday night. Makes for great uh, weekday <laughs> watching for college oh, football. Yeah. James, you and I have heard a little bit that Florida seems to be very high on Mike Norvell. I mean, you can't really not be high on him, Tom. He has done some great things with Memphis. I think he fits uh, the Urban Meyer mold of a, of a guy like skyrocketing the top, super young, can be the coach for a long time, a great aggressive recruiter. So uh, Memphis has is, is, is never been a powerhouse football program, and what he's done there is impressive. I think you take a big swing, Tom. You go after those Stoops and, 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 and Chip Kelly names, and if you have to fall on earth, you go for either uh, the guy who will be number one or Norvell. I think those are some really strong backup options. And speaking of Chip Kelly, he comes in at number two, former Oregon coach in, in, in the NFL. We've kind of mentioned this, guys, that he looks like he would be successful at college, but he's not going to want to do that. We've he wants to be. We've seen him be successful in college. The, Maybe he's given up on his dreams of being a successful NFL head coach. The money is always going to be a factor, I mm -hmm. think. What concerns me about Chip Kelly, for starters, fantastic coach. We know that we've seen so much of success at Oregon, making them into a national championship threat. My question around Florida, is, or for the Florida job is this. First of all, does Chip Kelly even want the job? Like, does he want to become the Florida head coach with all the stress and pressure that that job entails? And B, does he want to go to the SEC in general? 
I can speak to the SEC part, Tom. I can speak that he went to the Philadelphia Eagles because he thought it was like an American brand. I mean, Philadelphia mm -hmm. Eagles are one of the top five or six brands in a city that supports diehard, uh, their football team. Oregon never was that. I know you say that there was less expectations in Oregon, and maybe that's why he's thrived. But I don't know, outside of Urban Meyer, if we've ever had a head coach uh, at one school come in. Specifically, we definitely have not. We're talking about their first head coaching job. Like Chip Kelly did at Oregon, Tom, four years, a it's national unreal. title it game. Was. I think he had, what, seven losses in four years, and I'm getting my math set, and I didn't even think about this. I mean, they were in the Rose Bowl of the national championship game every single year. And, oh, by the way, he didn't have Marcus Mariota for three of those years. He had Mariota for one year. He had a new quarterback every single year. Guys like Darren Thomas would play one year, get you know jumped over by another guy who Dennis came Dixon. after him. You know, Dixon was actually before, that was his last year as OC. Mm -hmm. uh, but oh, yeah, there right. was a string of, I don't think he had a, a single quarterback for two years in those four. New quarterback, every guy. A couple of them were junior college transfers. So uh, I think Chip Florida Kelly. Florida would love that. Chip, Chip Kelly is your home run quarter, you know, guy. He can come in and turn, do wonders that offense right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, All right, and moving on, we at number one, we have Dan Mullen from Mississippi State, a guy who knows this Florida team a little bit when because he was an offensive coordinator there. The thing that jumps out to me with Mullen, A, we've seen success at Mississippi State. What I think else makes sense for me, James, is that the athletic director right now, Scott Strickland, is the, the, the former Mississippi State athletic director, is now the athletic director at Florida. So there's obvious ties there. If we want, if Mississippi, if Florida, excuse me, one Stan Mullen, I think they'd be able to get him. I am a little bit questioning here to an extent of if Dan Mullen wants to leave Mississippi State and if Florida wants him. I'm not sure how the relationship is between the parties involved. Tom, there's been multiple coaching hires since uh, Urban Meyer has left this program. And Dan Mullen, you always thought he was number one or in the top on the list. He's never seemed to materialize as a candidate. So. The only way I think it because I think Mullen is rightful to be the top target because he's proven he can win in the SEC West, which, oh, by the way, is a hell of a lot harder than the SEC East, is where Florida currently, you know, Florida plays. And he had some you know, magnificent success there as the offensive coordinator under, under Urban Meyer. And you've got that lineage. He's probably, you know, considered a Florida man by the people of Florida. But I wonder, is it like Roy Williams when he went to North Carolina in 2004, I believe it was, after the 2003 season? Is it just his time hey mama's called once mama's called twice she calls three times you got to go home and i know it's not his true home but it's kind of where he made his coaching name uh was at the offensive coordinator of the florida gators so i think there is some serious i guess likelihood that florida like you know texas ultimately did with tom herman they just walk in and it's first meeting say tom you want to be here i sure do uh texas wants you they do the same thing with dan mullen dan we've done this thing for uh, three times now you want it Yes or no. And he is the guy, I think, of all these candidates that all three of those factions would universally say, okay, I can support that guy. I can support that guy. I, Did, I agree. Didn't happen at Texas with Charlie Strong. It had ma massive factions. Brady Hoke in Michigan and some other head coaches. A lot of factions. USC is going through it right now with Clay Helton. A lot of factions there. People don't like Clay. They do like Clay. One thing with Mullen, something you and I talked about off air, with uh, some of the calls that have been made from the Florida Athletic Department to CAA, the major college football coaching agent or, or organization. There have been multiple calls to CAA from Florida, which either means everything or it means nothing. Or it means nothing. So uh, as I was saying, right when I walked in the show time, I literally was in the shower 25 minutes ago. That's how <laughs> that's how fast I ran over to get in the show. Didn't even get to go to hair and makeup. But but I was on the phone during my little physical therapy session, and these are some plugged-in people, not just Florida, but the sports world. These are sports agents, Tom. And they said that the the it's like the 1980s Cold War between Florida Athletic Department and LA at the CAA agents, and they've got the football office That's in that, St. Louis. That private line. It's a private line. And so what does it mean? Is it just we're getting through the nitty-gritty details because McElwain is represented by Super yeah. Agent Jimmy Sexton. Mm -hmm. You know who else is represented by him? It is one Dan Mullen. So is it a little and you've seen this several times in major coaching search where the guy who left is replaced by another guy, same agent. So this would not be unprecedented for Sexton to be playing both sides. And listen, think, think how much he can make out in this deal. It's like the U.S. government. I'm going to take 15% from the buyout. I'm going to take 10% from the buy-in, right? Like, hey, <laughs> we're going to lower the buyout by like 25%, and then yeah. we're going to give Dan Mullen this big old new contract. Yeah. I, I, I the double dip. Absolutely. So I want to talk about just a few things, and we had these coming up on screen here. I want to talk. I'm going to look at my text here. So the first thing we just saw in there is that multiple, I spoke to multiple agents. The factions are strong. We had that graphic before. If uh, we get a chance to throw it up, fine. But if not, three factions, Tom. The Spurrier faction, the Urban Mountain. Yeah, Spurrier went stoops. 
the, the, uh, the new school guys, the Urban Meyer, the guys in their mid-40s, uh, they want um, Chip, Kelly. Like Chip Kelly, I'm sorry. And then there's the, uh, we don't have ties, we're just Florida men. Nationwide search, let's mm -hmm. talk to everybody. So those are the factions we're dealing with at the University of Florida right now. The second thing, and then so we can leave it up there for a second. The second thing is that the big check writers, and I'm going to do a lot of research after this. Who are the guys who are writing the five, ten million dollar checks to the Florida? The ones that make things happen. That can pay for that buyout. That can get a guy like Chip Kelly who might want ten million dollars a year or more. Job Soups might want twelve million dollars a year or more. Who are the guys who are going to put that money into the university endowments to pay for that? Uh, and then uh, last thing is, and I want to throw this up across the bottom of the screen because I think this is the most important of all the things I heard. Tom, is this number three? Is the AD, the athletic director, Scott Strickland, Scott Strickland at Florida does not have the full support of the boosters. Mm. This is where the factions go apart. This and is, this is when good. things get really dicey. Because you know what's going to happen, Tom? You are just going to have rumor palooza, right? You're going to have rumor palooza going on with this. You're going to be hearing things all over the place that, hey, this guy talked to this person, this person. You know why? Because people are going to go do things independent of, of the athletic director. And what's going to happen there is if you don't have a fine-tuned coaching search, if you don't have your AD, get everybody out of the room, I'm the one doing the talking, what you get is a lot of people, you know, all of a sudden it's, ooh, ooh, Bob Stoops is talking. What does Stoops have to do? What does a guy like Dan Mullen have to do, Tom? If he asks the question, he has to take himself out of the running if there's too many rumors out there. So that's what Florida needs to, uh, to uh, uh, avoid. I don't think they're going to. So there's mutiny at Florida, and the AD does not have the full support of the boosters to make the decision, and people are you know, kind of pulling him in all directions. So with that... Um, that's dangerous. That's where coaching hires go awry, and that's when you hear a lot of talk, and it upsets a lot of different people. Yeah, so Jordan, why don't we uh, depart the show? Let's run through the top ten one more time, and then we'll, uh, we'll loop the show. Yep, for those of you just joining us, we are in breaking news for a developing story that Jim McElwain, the Florida Gators head coach, has been fired. So we're going to go ahead and run through the top ten replacements that could um, potentially take that spot. At number 10 first, we have Bob Stoops, retired head coach from Oklahoma. And number nine, Monk, Mike Gundy from Oklahoma State. And at number eight, we have Matt. Mike McIntyre. Matt, Mike McIntyre. <laughs> Tricky Excuse name. me, sorry. And at number seven, Neil Brown from Troy. Number six, we have Jeff Brom from Purdue. Number five, coming in. We have Scott Frost, UCF head coach. And so that's one I think that uh, I think that's one that a lot of people are going to go after after they strike out a lot of people. That's I where agree. they're going to turn to. I agree. And at number four coming in, we have Matt Campbell from Iowa State. Or this guy. I mean, I think these are the these are the backups to the the swing for the fences. Yeah, it's Campbell totally and, and, and it's Frost. And at number three, we have Mike Norvell from Memphis, a very young guy. And, and Tom, what, what, what a source told me is Norvell is a lot of people's number ones because they just don't think they have a, a chance with the names like Stoops and Kelly. So he could be the true number the one. realistic number one. Yeah, realistic number one. And at number two is Chip Kelly, former Oregon head coach. And the Urban, the Urban Meyer uh, era guys, 45-year-old boosters, they want Chip Kelly. They want the Urban Meyer glory days back. At number one is Dan Mullen from Mississippi State, former coordinator at Florida. I would have guessed that the Dan Mullen era, or the, the, excuse me, the, uh, the Urban Meyer faction would have wanted Dan Mullen. That, that kind of would have been my guess. Yeah, well, I, I guess so too, and, and that was surprising to me. So I asked specifically that question to my contact who told me that the Urban Era guys were there. And I guess there was just a thing that, you know, some schools, if you were number two, offensive number two to an offensive genius, was it them or was it you? Yeah, and and where did we go from there? And Mullen had the one year that they got to number one in the uh, in the polls, but who was their head, who was their, the quarterback time? It was one Dak Prescott. So even though we didn't realize at the time, they had a time, they had a generational quarterback at Mississippi State. So it it could have been kind of a one-year wonder kind of thing. Okay, you guys, and we're going to go ahead and loop our top ten, um, starting at with... Yeah, let's just loop the top ten. So here are the ten, top ten uh, people we think that are going to be uh, the, the, the candidates for Florida jobs. So we'll loop this now. We'll probably have more news later on tonight or tomorrow on the Cam Rogers Show. He might have some, some big-time guests. So for Tom, for Jordan, I'm James Yoder. Thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a wild one, Tom. It's gonna be fun. Till next time.